I'm Lena Ketzing and I'm Head of Section for Society, Market and Policy and Associate Professor in Energy Economics and Policy at DTU. Today's lecture is about wind energy economics and in particular I will focus on value metrics. After this lecture you should be able to explain why value metrics are important for wind energy, name three different economic return metrics, explain the relationship between risk and return and describe how value scope is enlarged in the socioeconomic perspective. Let me start by giving you an example of why value metrics are important. You have these two beautiful wind turbines here, the red and the blue. They both have the same capacity. However, the blue one has a much larger rotor diameter and this comes with a lower specific power. Because of that, they also have different power curves with different power outputs per wind speed. And in my example, you can see that the larger blades, they have a higher cost. And here, the levelized cost of energy is higher for the blue wind turbine. But when we look into the power output of the two turbines, you can see that the higher, the larger swept area gives us a larger energy yield in the lower wind speed areas. And if you are operating in a wind market with varying power prices and with high variable renewable energy generation, it is often the case that in these high wind speed areas, the, power, the market prices are actually quite low, whereas in these lower wind speed areas, the market prices are high. So on average, it can be assumed that the blue turbine has an average higher achieved price than the red wind turbine. So here in this example, you can see one wind turbine with lower cost and another wind turbine with higher prices. That should give you an indication that it is not sufficient to only look into the cost side if you want to determine if a wind farm investment is attractive. There are different types of value that are relevant for wind energy. The example before was about project economic value. There are other ones that are relevant as well. You can broadly categorize them into business, private economic values on this side, and socioeconomic values down here. In this lecture, we will briefly touch upon just a few of those. And we will start with the project economic value. The first thing that we're looking at is project profitability. And you have already heard about free cash flows and net present value in the economy lecture of our first version of the MOOC given by Tom Cronin. I will supplement that with the internal rate of return here. And this should give you a full picture of this project profitability cost benefit analysis. What we are then also looking into more the financial value of a wind energy project where we're looking into risk return relations and required rate of return. This should give you a better idea of looking into the project as a portfolio for the firm. Let's start with the return metrics for project profitability. The return is the rate at which your money grows that you have invested in and this is also called yield it's not to be mixed up with the energy yield uh, that's used in wind engineering oftentimes. So here we're talking about the grow growth of the invested money. The simplest return metrics is the return on investment, ROI. And here we are simply looking into the value in the beginning of a project versus the value in the end of a project. And then we can see how much that has changed. This is the total growth rate, growth rate of an initial investment over a given period of time. It does not take into account the period in between. The compound annual growth rate, KGAR, does exactly that. It looks at the value in the beginning of a project and in the end of the project and also takes into account that in between your money grows. So it's the compound annual growth rate over a given period of time However, it, can only look at, it only looks into these two points in time, so there is no variation in annual cash in and cash outflows possible in this metric. If you have a project that has varying production values, for example, 
or prices, you would turn to the internal rate of return metrics, which is the compound annual growth rate over a given period of time at varying annual cash in and cash out flows. The internal rate of return gives you the project return rate, the expected return rate. Let's have a quick look at this. If you estimate this return rate, you would have, for example, you can put it on this axis, the cost benefit analysis would re return you a number, for example, 10%. And then you can take this number and compare it to other projects. And in this way, you can determine which one you want to invest in. So here in this uh, very simple example, you would compare three different projects and project A would be deemed most attractive because this is the one that has the highest return. In financial analysis, however, we would never look into return as the only indicator because we are talking about investments. Investments are always about the future. We are today using money that in the future should give us some returns. These returns, however, are uncertain. We are not quite sure what the electricity prices are going to be, what our costs are going to be. So we have a certain investment and an uncertain return. And how uncertain this is can be shown uh, with this enlarged uh, graph where we have two axes, the return and the risk. And here you can already see that project A, which gives the highest return, actually also gives the highest risk or has the highest risk. So it is not so clear anymore if that's the one um, that we find uh, most attractive. In fact, we can start analyzing the risk return relation of those projects and uh, you can see here that B has the steepest line, which is then obviously also the w project with the best risk return relationship here. And this would be the one that in portfolio analysis would be deemed the most attractive project. The takeaway is if there is higher risk, an investor requires a higher rate of return. We look always at both indicators at the same time. But what does that mean to have risk? in uh, investment projects. Here we always mean the uncertainty of the project value. Let me give you two examples. The first project has a fixed price contract. You can see that here on the axis, the price is the same over the whole project period. However, what is uncertain still is uh, how much the wind farm is going to produce. We don't know, it could be taking different pathways. And because of that, the project value is uncertain. What we can do now is we can calculate the project profitability distribution. So this is the probability distribution which we expect the project to be yielding. What we can do is we, can, we have a mean, which is the expected value of the project, and then we can determine the standard deviation, which is a measure for the variation. In this example, with merchant sales, again, we assume we operate in a market where we are selling at a variable price um, uh, at the market. You will see that both the price and the production volume are changing, which can lead to the situation that our overall probability distribution is broader. The project is more uncertain. So let's keep these two projects in mind. I would deem the first one, a low risk project, because there is a narrow probability distribution. And the second project, a high risk project with a broad probability distribution. So it can be the case now that both of these projects have the same internal rate of return in the mean. However, one project has a higher required return because it is riskier and the other has a lower required return because it is less risky. So projects with the same internal rate of return can on the one hand be deemed not profitable or on the other hand be deemed profitable. What we can say here is that the required returns, we look at the project and see what does it need to yield for me. 
can also be seen as the financing cost. Because that is what the investors, the shareholders, um, would want to have in return to giving you the money, or even the banks would have an interest in return to giving you the money. So the uh, required returns are also the financing cost, which are the cost of capital, which you use as a discounting in your net present value calculation. But let's turn to portfolios, because you would very rarely invest into a project that uh, is a standalone. You would bring the project into the portfolio of an already operating firm. And here there can be very different uh, projects. And what is really interesting for us is what this one new project edition change in the company financials. So we are always interested in looking into the incremental impacts on the business. And that might be related to synergies, for example. So the project might be helping on bringing down risk exposure, or it might add to your risk exposure of the whole firm. So these in changes in risk exposure is what we are interested in looking at uh, in portfolio value. So we are not looking into one project as a project value alone anymore. It's the eff effect of the project onto the firm's portfolio. But let's look into uh, a little broader perspective. But until now, we've only looked into the firm and the value for the firm. First the project, then the portfolio. However, the wind farm itself has much more effect on the overall environment. For example, yeah, climate, local pollution, the social um, society around. And uh, if we want to include these uh, other elements of value into this uh, perspective, then we need to try and estimate what these effects are. I'm just giving you a couple of examples here. Avoided emissions are a value that are often counted for um, wind energy projects. How much is this wind energy project contributing to mitigation of climate change? That is related to the policy objectives that it might be related in, to this area, but there are other policy objectives that the project could help with. For example, increased security of supply. The project could also be used to increase local community benefits. There might be some additional local economic activity. The project might help with job creation. And these are all values that especially policymakers would put onto a project to determine if, it, if this technology should be supported um, and how much uh, value is generated for the whole of society. We should not forget that there are also negative environmental and social impacts uh, related to um, wind energy, which have to be taken into account. In general, the socioeconomic analysis is a cost-benefit analysis very similar to the um, uh, firm business case analysis where you would uh, generate cash flows uh, or monetized um, uh, flows of costs and benefits and weigh them, against, weigh them against each other and determine the attractiveness of the project for society as a whole. In summary, uh, in this lecture you should have learned now why value metrics are important for wind energy I've given you three different economic return metrics. I've looked into the relationship between risk and return and how, how the value scope is enlarged by a socioeconomic perspective.